This brings us to the subject of the most dangerous thing in the ocean. Boats. You may think it's sharks or, you know, um, Irukandji or whatever, but actually the most injuries, most deaths uh, occur and we don't even hear about them because the news doesn't take them up so much like uh, getting attacked by a shark gets taken up. We find out about attacks by sharks in California the next day. We've got it here all over our, our Facebook pages, etc. So, you know, the bottom line is, is that that has sensational. But boat actions are occurring more frequently than any of these other things. The problem with boats is they run us over. And it's not just getting hit, it's also getting chopped up. Simple. And uh, that's what we have to avoid. And of course we can avoid that by with our float and our flag towed behind us. That's a major point, okay? And uh, that's probably the most important reason that we would tow a float behind us is to stop boats running us over. Boats are a real problem, but on top of that, it's even worse, it's jet skis. Jet skis go very fast and we don't hear them so easily. A friend of mine got hit by a jet ski. He had no idea it was even there. He woke up on the surface after he was hit. Didn't even know it was a jet ski, it had gone by the time he, was, by, by the time he woke up. So jet skis are a major problem as well. All right, if you're boat diving, there's a, a simple situation in that the captain of the boat, the person in charge of the boat at the time when you're in the water, his job is to keep the boats from running you over. And he does this by positioning the boat between you and the oncoming boat. So he, he'll drive the boat and you'll see a boat coming over here and he'll bring the boat in to make sure and he'll have a flag on us, uh, you know, a dive flag, legally needed in Australia. You have a dive flag up there and the boat would have to go around. Okay, that's his job, to do that, to look after his divers. Okay, um, quite often he might have to get a little bit close if you've got more than one boat coming. And he has to do that with uh, some intelligence. A person in charge of the boat at the time when you're in the water, it's his job uh, to know where the divers are, okay? And he will have to count divers, okay? One, two, and I have three divers in the water, but he can only count two. He's not gonna bring his boat anywhere near them. Doesn't matter if one of them's in the water, going, come over here, I got a fish, come over. He can count one, two, can't count the third one. He doesn't go near them. Third one pops up, now he brings the boat in. This is very important. Quite a few accidents happen by someone who's actually your dive buddy or, and the person in charge of the boat. That uh, when you go from one boat to another, it's important to get to know what the controls are doing. Part of controlling a boat is that you need to know what the controls are doing. It's no good jumping in a boat and, you know, for example, you're used to uh, the mechanical um, controls and now you've got electronic. Now the electronic are very light. It is quite possible to pull those controls a little bit further than your neutral and not realize that you've put it in reverse. You could back over a diver that way. So the smart thing is to get to know these controls. The final subject in this is the most accidents occur in boats is crossing bars. Okay, more problems crossing bars than any other way and this is not just spear fishermen this is also uh, your line fishermen and it's just because this is where the action is a bar that's one day safe the next day can be a major problem and you think it's safe you know or you're going out on one tide and then when you come back in you've got half the amount of water following the same line may not work so uh, it's important to get to know bars if you have to cross them I would say the way to do it is to find someone who has done it successfully for years and actually go out with them. This would be the smart way of doing this, okay? Uh, and get them to tell you what they're looking for and how to go about it, you know? Uh, <clears throat> and get to learn bar sense yourself, you know, where the deep water is, where the shallow water is, what you can do to handle it, you know? Uh, <clears throat> it's quite possible when you're, you know, you're coming out, you go to go across the bar, and you have a look at it, 
and you go, no, we're not going to go out, and you turn around and go back. This, actually, you need to be able to do that rather than going, I have to get out today. No, you need to be able to make a decision, turn around and go back. We've often done it, you know, uh, crossing bars in New South Wales, <clears throat> you know, the uh, South West Rocks Bar. We've often um, go and watch it, stand out on the, on the, uh, on the uh, groin and, and watch the bar for a while and see if anybody else is going out through it and just keep a, a check it on it and then go, no, we're not going out. Or we can see, okay, we can see we can get out, blah, blah, blah. Okay, get the idea? So it's being prepared, being able to make a decision on the day. Don't feel that like you have to go out just because you've got four people in the boat that says, yeah, we want to go spend. No, no, you've got to make a decision. Remember, it is the captain's decision to not only be responsible for taking people out, but for bringing them back safely. Okay, that brings us to the end of that subject. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. You can check out more content on our YouTube channel. Visit one of our stores and shop online at www.spearfishing.com.au.